Merlin, Network Magic, now with Elastic. Okay, my name is John Capobianco, and thank you for joining me. I had to record this video. I didn't really intend on um, recording anything today, but I've just done something so cool and so neat. I thought I would record it live and get into my development and what I've done here. So, as you know, let's switch over to the main, and in my, um, this is the GitHub Automate Your Network Merlin. And there's the Merlin logo, right? Network Magic. And what has inspired me is this tiny DB. So tiny database is um, exactly as it's described. It's a tiny database. And it doesn't have a server. It's serverless. And it's just stored locally as one big JavaScript object notation file. So as I learn and parse features, I take the JavaScript object notation and add it to the tiny database. Okay, you follow so far? So I'm in this DevNet sandbox and I have a connection to this NXOS um, Nexus 9K virtual. And I've started to look at Elastic. And Elastic, really, the Elastic search, but there's more to just search than Elastic. Now, Elastic is, right, free and open search creators of Elastic, Elk, and Cabana, right? So that's kind of the Elk stack. And I thought, can I, can I do what I've done with TinyDB, except with Elasticsearch and Cabana? So let's take a look at how this is done. Now, I tried, I'm going to be open and honest with my development here. I tried this locally in WSL, but WSL doesn't support the system MD to spin up uh, the required things for Elasticsearch. Now I could also run this as a container locally, which is what I'll likely graduate to or move to. But for now, I have um, signed up for the cloudelastic.co. I, you know, I have 14 days left in my trial. So I've created a Merlin in Elastic, and this is the dashboard here. Now, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I really don't. But I, I, let's show you what I do know and what I have got working. So I started with Postman and I did my get local host and, I, and, and it uses basic auth. So the username it provided me was Elastic and then it gave me a password, which I'm not going to show you. And in the body, I don't, you know, there's no body here. I'm just doing a get against the URL they've given me. So if I hit copy here, copy endpoint, that's what I've pasted into Postman with my credentials and let's do the get. So this tells me that it's up and running as a Docker container in the cloud, you know, for search. Okay, great. So I know that the instance is running. So my next thing is going to be to post my JSON into this Elasticsearch instance. And, and I'll show you what I need to do that. So I tried a few different ways, but they give you this cloud ID. So I've taken the cloud ID, and that's important, and I'll show you where that comes back to. So you need the cloud ID, the username, and the password. And um, I'm going to try not to show my password. But um, here is the Pythonic way. And all I've done, um, you can see, well, you'll see, I've isolated a single show command for Cisco NXOS. And I'm going to parse that into JavaScript object notation and then index it in Elasticsearch is what it's known as. So I've had to import from Elasticsearch, import Elasticsearch. And um, here I define ES, and good, this means I can hide my credentials, but that's all you need to see. So, right, it's it, ES is my variable that I'm declaring, right, left side of an equal sign, equals Elasticsearch, and then my cloud ID, and then HTTP auth, and my username and password. Right? Okay. So far, so good. So now I'm into the Pi ATS test sections, and I treat these as tests. So my first thing is to loop over device in testbed. So for this, I have the one device in the testbed, the DevNet 9K sandbox, right? 
So for that one device, go ahead and parse show IP interface brief and put that in this variable. So this variable, as of line 90, contains the JavaScript object notation of the show IP interface brief command. Now I've boiled out everything else. I don't create any files or anything, the full Merlin for isolated testing. So now if it's not none, I for my index or for my ID, I should change this to ID. Let me do that right now. ID equals. So the ID equals show IP interface brief. And then I'm doing ES, all right, Elasticsearch dot index. So go ahead and index. And what is the index? Well, I'm using the device alias from the test bed. And I just want to highlight that it has to be in lower case. So in my test bed, I have it as capital D for DevNet. That's not a valid index. It has to be lower case. So I'm using the python.lower function here to ensure that whatever's in this variable is lower case. I'm ignoring any 400 I get back from Elasticsearch. And my ID equals ID, and in this case, it's show IP interface brief. Now the body, what am I posting? If this was a curl, right, there would be a body, which is the JavaScript object notation I want to index. Well, it's simply the parse show IP interface brief. Let me try to split screen right from here, from line 90 right, which is the parsed version of show IP interface brief, go ahead and make that the body to index. Pretty cool, right? So let me save this and let's go ahead and run it. And um, I'm going to just run it here. Let me just clear the screen. And actually here, right, just to give you an anchor point, what are we doing here? So I'm going to sign into the Nexus 9K and I think this is admin Cisco123. And this is the old way. There's, there's, there's a, a whole generation like myself was raised on show IP interface brief, right? On a router, on a layer three device. And I get that information. Well, can we automate this? Can we treat this as infrastructure, as code and turn this information into a searchable indexed database that then we can do all kinds of amazing things with just to give you an, an idea. All right. So let's run the Merlin elastic search job. Now we're going to run the elastic search job and let's just put time in front of this to give a sense on how long this all takes. Again, I'm connecting through a very poor DSL VPN to the DevNet sandbox. I'm running the show IP interface brief command. I'm parsing that into JavaScript object notation, and then I'm posting that into my elastic search. Everything passed, everything's good. And this took about 1.7 seconds of CPU time, two seconds of real time for me. That's with my own ASCII. Now let's take a look at something here. Okay, good. This, this is important. This actually is important. The ASCII is pretty, All right? Let's take a stop and take a look at the ASCII. <laughs> but here, this is the result of my post or my put. It actually does a put, not a post. And here, right, is that index, the device alias. And then here is the ID and I get a 200 back. Now I can take this whole string here which is what I'm going to do and post it or get it, excuse me, paste it to get it, not post it. And I have my authentication here, my username and password, right? And um, let's take a look at, did it work? Yes, it did. So from a postman perspective, I can post into the device alias underscore doc, because it's a document database, show IP interface brief. And here is the JavaScript object notation, right? Now let's take the same thing 
to here, right, just to here, and take it into the Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch has um, an API console, and if you don't have anything in here, it just, you know, this is a way to see that it's, it's up, right? This is the same thing I did in Postman. Well, let's paste in the device alias interface brief. It's right there in Elastic. Isn't that pretty incredible? So now I'm just going to see, I haven't tried this yet. Can I just go to the DevNet Sandbox level? I can. And it has the mappings into the properties. Very cool. Very cool stuff. Right? Now I think if I undo that, I believe I could also maybe dot into, do something like this source interface eth15 is that going to work no all right hmm i'm gonna have to play with the the api let's go back to this anyway that was something off the cuff so now there's also cabana and there's enterprise search and metrics and performance all kinds of stuff for me to explore but let me just switch back to my main interviewing here. Now, where I'm going to go next, again, that was one command, and this is in the DevNet sandbox, where this is um, not the full uh, 11 learn functions and 28 or 30 show commands. It's a small subset in the DevNet sandbox for Nexus 9K. But that's fine. I'm going to develop this, and um, I'll release a, a, a Cabana-ready Python job for you, but let me finish all the commands and build up the full database and uh, I'll come back in just a few minutes. I'm going to finish up that code. There's, um, it's just going to take a couple minutes. I'll see you real soon and get excited about search engines for network state data. Okay, here we go. So I have finished all of the commands for the DevNet Sandbox Nexus 9K for Merlin and we're going to see them all. And I've tested them and I've ironed out a few things. So let's talk about what I had to iron out. All right. I have great success, but I did have to figure a couple things out. So again, in Postman, I'm going to just make sure that my uh, Elasticsearch is up. Yeah, it's up. And I got the JSON response back. And um, so that means that it is up. So now here's a couple of puts that I had to uh, adjust. So as you'll see, when I run Merlin... Um, I get the status code back and for a few of these I could it didn't make sense to me um, I was getting 400 instead of 200 back meaning a bad request my request was bad well in some of the cases I was going over the total field limit of a thousand so I've brought that up to 10,000 and the other one was my nested depth limit the default is 20 I've adjusted this to 50. Now these are just HTTP puts against the underscore settings behind your elastic URL. And then you pass the JavaScript index mapping, in this case, the depth limit, and in this case, the total fields limit. Once those two things were ironed out, we're off to the races. So let's run um, the full Merlin with the time command again hands-free and This is connecting to the Nexus 9k sandbox through a VPN and there's Merlin and it's going to take a bit of time And I'll just talk through what's happening. So it's established the connection and right now it's running the learn functions So it's learning BGP right now. It's learning interfaces it's learning different things, meaning it's running a bunch of show commands, parsing them together into a uniform Java script object notation schema that makes sense for what we're learning. All right, and we now I'm into the show commands. So on top of the learn functions, I've picked a handful of valuable show commands. Now, here we go. Now, each of these is me doing the put. You can see put the URL, the DevNet Sandbox Nexus 9K, meaning the device alias as the index. 
and then each of either the learn or the show commands. And I'm getting 200 statuses back for all of them. Let's let this finish and I'll scroll back up to that. So we can see everything is passed. It took 5.9, so say six seconds of CPU, and we waited for about, you know, a minute and 10 seconds or 16 user seconds. But everything passed, so there's 31 total steps. And let's go back up to that section of the puts. So here are all of the puts, and this is important, we're gonna reference this information. And we can see that they're all status 200 and how long in milliseconds these puts, how long it took for the G Python to index into. So now we can, let's take learned ACL and let's make a postman request out of that. So I'm going to uh, duplicate interface brief and I'm going to rename it. Uh, which one was this one? Uh, learned ACL. Okay. Uh, get, right, learn ACL. And again, I've inherited the authentication here and um, that's it. So now let's go get it. And there we go. There is the ACL in JavaScript. Pretty cool. So now we just go through each of those responses and I'm not going to do all of them. Let's do IP interface brief and just check out what that one looks like. It's just another random one, a show command versus a learned function. So I already have it here, interface brief. Let's make sure that the URL is correct, and it is. And let's go ahead and save that one. And let's run interface brief. So here's interface brief, and it has, you know, VLAN 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, a loopback, and a physical interface, which we have all of these keys for. Now let's take that same thing and move into Elasticsearch out of Postman. So I'm going to go to the API console and here's interface brief and we've already done interface brief so let's look at that learn BGP. So we're going to take or learned ACL rather. So it's just right learned ACL and this is doc right learned ACL and there it all is. So let's, what else do we have? We have learned uh, interface, right? We have learned OSPF. It's all in there. So we have a full database. Now here's something interesting. Let's go to the parent level. Let's just look at the DevNet sandbox and So now look at what we get. We have, I believe, the full, yeah, look at the f every, every one of those entries available as one giant entity known as the De DevNet Nexus 9K. And it's, it's everything you would want to know about this device in one database that now we can explore Cabana and the enterprise search. Now, let me switch back over to the screen. I am so excited about this. This is, thank you for joining me on this journey. I think this is something that's going to become part of the, the fabric of, of enterprise networking. Go get the state, right, and run it through and send it up to Elasticsearch and we just search for things or make API calls, right? There's, there's no need to go to the CLI. Merlin can run in a container or in Expresso or as a serverless functions that just constantly fill and refresh the elastic, which then we query and search. Or, or let's look at Cabana and let's look at the enterprise search functions, which is what I'm gonna do offline a little bit. I'm gonna play and make sure I have some understanding. And then we're gonna jump back in and, and see what those other two functions look like with this elastic network state database. All right, I'll be back soon. Don't go anywhere. Hi, okay, so um, I've started to look into some of these things and um, I'm gonna start with, I wanna start with enterprise search. We'll come back to Cabana at the end, which I've looked at a little bit, but let's look at enterprise search. So then when you open enterprise search, it takes you to the Elastic App Search 
and to go to the beginning here I set up an engine a search engine and then they talk about the ways that you can index your JSON um, you can crawl it with the web paste it or upload a JSON file or you can post which is what I'm going to be doing to the search engine so I guess not only do I have to build it in elastic and and post it or put it there but I also have to post it to the search engine that I've set up so that it can be indexed for keyword searches so I'm um, going to give you the sample here and what I'm going to do is try to turn this into Python and um, I'll start with you know the show IP interface brief and once I get that working I will come back to um, show you that in the search engine if I get it working and then I'll retrofit every command and see if we can search the entire thing and we'll leave Cabana to the end just wanted to check in to give you that quick update that um, you, there is a little bit more to this to get the search engine going but this will be worth it so stick around thank you oh boy this is really exciting I think I've just made like a Google search engine against network state and this is pretty cool so let's let's look in let's dive into this so let's look at the code first so I found um, again I'm using the app search right from uh, elastic search uh, they have the enterprise search and when you launch enterprise search it takes you to uh, this panel here and I've picked app search okay now I've created an engine and you can see I have two documents in it now so this is the engine Merlin-Search. So let's jump back into the Python. So I define the app search equals app search, you know, from the Elastic Enterprise Search, which I had to pip install. I pass it the URL to my search engine. And then I have my, my bearer token that they provide me in the GUI for my token here. And let me just undo and put the token back in. Now here, I say app search dot index documents, and the engine name which is required is Merlin Search, and my documents is well in this case self dot parse show IP interface brief, which is the genie parse JSON. So let's go ahead and run it, and. Um, again we can do all this in postman as well where I did my development to begin with to get this working and it didn't take very long for me to sort this out and if I scroll up here here is my elastic transport my post and I get a status 200 so now let's go check and now I if I refresh this I believe I'll have three documents hey I have three documents so let's take a look so this gives me all of this, um, you know, analytical type stuff. And if we look at the documents, well, here are the documents for interface. And they have the JavaScript here, which is pretty interesting. And if I go to schema, I can see, you know, interface has been recently added. And I can, you know, confirm type or create a schema field here. And there's a query tester and um, if we go to the query tester let's test right down well look at it jumps to protocol down and um, it and maybe you know VLAN how about you know VLAN 100 pretty neat now I don't know how far this goes or what other things we can do yet but what I'm going to do just like I did the last time I'm gonna add that little bit of Python to every one of the um, commands and build up this full search engine and fill it with documents. So that's going to take a few minutes, but I'll be back uh, hopefully soon. Thanks. We'll see you soon. And we're back. So I've added all the scale commands. Let's check it out real quick in the Python. And it was easy, really easy. I just copied these three lines under each of the different sections, the show and the parse you know and um, I replace this with the you know the variable that I want as we go so let's go ahead and run it to show right this is a, a dry run I wanted to make sure that it was gonna go 
So we're going to run it hands-free with the uh, no time command. Don't worry about the time command. It's just seconds in CPU. Um, so again, it's all of the learn functions. We're going to see them one by one in just a second here. And it's taking all of the JavaScript now and it's posting it to the base Elastic, where we were making the API calls earlier. And now I'm posting it all to an Elastic app search is what it's called. And we're going to see in a second here that it's going to post to Elastic and then it's going to post it to the Elastic search engine that we've created, which will index all of this and make it searchable like a true searchable network and we're going to explore it so we're getting there it's through the show commands here we go so now that first put is to the elastic and the second post is to the search engine and you can see we're getting the status 200s back from all of these and um, it's just going through and posting and putting the data into the cloud and generating the search engine metadata for us, indexing it along the way. And again, all of this can be suppressed. We don't need to look at this. I like to see it during development, but if I'm going to turn this... Okay, so it's all done. Everything's passed. Now let's hop back over to the Elasticsearch and refresh. And we have 53 documents and 54 fields. So let's go take a look here. So we look at the documents and we have interfaces, statistics, VLANs, default management, VRFs, platform interfaces, the Mac tables, VRF information, um, all of this great JavaScript, pages and pages of it. Pretty neat. So now I think we can do searches in the query here and um, here, let me try something. Maybe we could go find a MAC address from the MAC table. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's just try it. Do I have a MAC? Yeah, okay. So there's a MAC. Let's search for this MAC address. Ha! And it boils it all down and says it's in this MAC table. Uh, that maybe isn't a great example, but we could look for, I don't know, pick something. How about a route? Let's look at the route JSON and let's look for here. Let's just look for this IP address. What is 172.16.0.1 doing? Okay, well, it is on this outgoing interface. See, I, I, I maybe there's a better front end for this, but let's try that again. So it's in these VRF tables. It's a router ID here, the router ID. So we know it's a router ID. And we also seem to know, huh, pretty interesting. So again, I'm still getting used to this. And we can see we have different schemas here, all of the different schema information, which we can search on. And um, pretty interesting stuff. So what's left to explore, I guess, is Cabana. So let's just do this live and jump into Cabana to finish out, round out the Elastic, Elastic Search, Enterprise Search, and now let's look at Cabana. So Cabana is going to let us um, pick from that data source, the Elastic, loading Elastic. Okay, and here we're going to do Visualize and Analyze. Let's take a look at Cabana. Analyze data and dashboards, search and find insights, presentations, reveal patterns and relationships. Okay, getting started with Kibana. Dashboards, discover, canvas maps, machine learning, graph, add your data. Okay, so let's create. Now you have data in Elasticsearch, which is what we do. Now create an index pattern. Kibana requires an index pattern to identify which indices you want to explore. All right, let's create an index pattern. And let's make it this source, the DevNet Sandbox. Your pattern matches one source. Okay, next, create index pattern. 
All right, so now I have all of this indexed. Look at all these fields and all of this, you know, great information. Crazy. Okay. So now that I have my index pattern, it sort of left me hanging here. Is there my index pattern stack management? Welcome to stack management. Is there a way for me to go back here? Lots of different stuff in here. I'm just wondering home, cabana, dashboard. Let's just jump into dashboards. Create a new dashboard. Okay. Create a visualization. And I have my 9K sandbox. And I can pick different types metrics or tables, bar graphs, line graphs, donut pie, tree maps, lots of great stuff. And there's 4,000 available fields meta fields. Wow, look at all these. So I guess it's alphabetical. See, these are all the access list fields. Right, so then I can just visualize. Can I do something like interface? All right, so I'm going to back off a little bit right now in the cabana stuff. There's over 4,000 fields and all kinds of amazing things in cabana. And I think it requires a little bit more focused attention right now. I've churned through a lot of code and a lot of discovery today and I'm going to maybe start fresh tomorrow with the cabana. So I'm going to spend some time looking around for ideas on cabana and um, I want to thank you for joining me today. I think this is going to really be incredible, uh, especially in your hands. It's open source. As you can see, it's a little bit of Python, right? Go get the state of the network, learn features or parse show commands. We have the JavaScript object notation boom send it up to elastic or the elastic app search and then visualize it with cabana incredible stuff a truly like a google like search engine for your network state and this is the like i just started doing this today i thought to myself hey let's try to integrate elastic a couple hours later, a little bit of discovery, a little bit of Googling, a little bit of trial and error, and here we are. We have a searchable, functional search engine. So um, I'm going to follow up with some Cabana stuff later in the week, and uh, please reach out to me if you'd like to get involved or if you have some ideas of your own or if you want my help getting started doing this with your own network. Thanks again, and uh, stay safe out there.